Welcome back to another episode where we continue to explore the Moog Model 15. This time, let's check out the envelope generator modules. All right, so we have two envelope generator modules right here. And uh, we're feeding, in this example, we're feeding a rectangular wave into a voltage-controlled amplifier, which is being control inputted by this first envelope generator. Let's play around these knobs to see if we can... Uh, Listen to how it sounds. Try to zoom in if I can. All right, so if I play if I play the uh, virtual keyboard right here, I got all these knobs at at near zero as much as I can. And really, you just hear a click. Now this T1, this will control how fast the signal ramps in. Let's listen to that. So as soon as it gets to like one second in, right here I'm at one, it's gonna cut out. Now if I let go, like let's turn it to five, four seconds. So if I let go after a second, the sound stops. So it doesn't have to complete, it's just how long it takes for the, sam the, uh, the sound to build up. Okay, T2, let's see what that does. T2 is how long the sound lasts after it's at maximum. So it sounds like, sounds like a plucking of a guitar string or... So I'm still, I'm building up to, I'm building up with no time with the T1. But then when I'm at maximum, I'm going to stay at maximum for one second. So I put them both to one second. So it built up for one second and then stayed at maximum for one second. And then as soon as I let go, it cuts off pretty fast. Now let's check out, so let's do, so T3, that's how far, how fast it decays. Okay, so I'm gonna decay for let's say two seconds. So it's gonna build up for 500 milliseconds and then after two seconds it's gonna decay. Now if I turn that back down. I need to turn this envelope. Yeah, I need to turn the E E uh it's E the sustained down. That's ten seconds, it's way too long. Let's turn it to one second and turn up the sustain. So I'm letting go of the key, and it's how long the note is sustaining for. So if I sustain for, so that's no sustain practically. Just a little bit of sustain. There's a second of sustain. So I'm just quickly tapping the note, and there's a bunch of. Uh, bunch of note right after it. So if we ramp up. hard to find a good pattern that will show off the E sustain variable. That's off.
Yeah, so you can hear it when I hold down the note. So if it's so if it's near zero, it's got no buildup. You can hear it as I turn it up. The sustain gets louder and louder. It's like how long, how how, how loud is the aftertouch almost, or the. So you can kind of mess with these to kind of form the sound the way you like it. And you have two of them. And then this can trigger input we saw before with the controller output. So by default it's wired like this. And you'd have to turn off the envelopes one right here, that blue, blue switch. So if you turn off the blue switch and you don't wire it, then nothing happens because the trigger doesn't doesn't occur. So I think that's about it. That's a quick tour of the envelope generator. Let's look at the manual real quick and see if we missed anything. T1 is the attack knob, how much it is, how, how long it takes to go from zero to maximum. T2 is the decay knob, how long it takes to go from maximum to the sustain. E sus is, which are time based, this is not, this is controls a constant level while it is held. And then T3 is the release knob, the final stage, determines the amount of time it takes to go turn to zero after it was released. Yep. Pretty standard stuff in modern uh, synthesizers, but I'm sure this was pretty revolutionary at the time. All right, thanks for watching. See you next time.